leadership is not about the formal position. It is more about the trust and the great cause or a clear vision. A leader, a, a leader who had been uh, side away from the position in party or government would continue to lead if people trusted him and his vision. As long as people trust, they will listen. But to gain the trust, leader should have to prove that he is a principal leader and having the greatest cause to fight, not for the personal gain. No leader should be, uh, should be afraid of uh, fighting for the great cause of their people as long as for everyone's benefits and uh, no one's harm. This is another leadership principle that holds uh, dearly by Dr. Mahade. Unfortunately, based on his observations and experience of meeting the Malay leaders after his dismissal from UMNO, they were afraid to voice out and share their views on the Malay predicaments. Some were afraid of losing their position and some might be trapped in uh, the deceptive beliefs inherent in their mind. Young and inexperienced leaders are susceptible to be yes-men and uncritical acceptance of top leaders' decision and acts. This should be okay for many people, but not for Dr. Mahade. His problem-based leadership learning inspired him to be a good problem analyst. The diagnostic approach of medical practice applied in leadership learning encouraged him to deal with problems in a methodical manner. He will never stop until met with the most probable answers. Unlike many other AMNO leaders, Dr. Mahade faced the problems as a leader, not as a follower. He could not easily accept the decisions of other leaders without further consideration. The bigger the risk, the bigger the reward. This saying precisely represents the situation of Dr. Mahade during the political exile facing the threat of ISA uh, detention. This preventive law of internal security acts enacted in 1960 was still in force in the late 60s, mostly to curb the, the activities of the communist activities or any other threats from within. Politicians are suspected of having uh, treacherous uh, activities were also susceptible to this law. For some, Dr. Mahathir's ultra Malay views might be considered a threat to the multiracial society of Malaysia. It was therefore the Tunku's administration had been monitoring his activities and at one point decided to detain him. Although the detention was not materialized, Dr. Mahathir had to face an emotional fear and agonizing experience. This experience developed a sense of uh, perseverance and courage in him. Political exile had also uh, taught Dr. Mahathir to reflect upon the importance of the multiracial and intercommunal social contract. All politicians and political parties, regardless of the ruling parties or the opposition, Malay-based or Chinese-based parties or the multiracial parties, for that matter, should accept this social contract without hesitant. As an Islamic party, PAS should not envision a theocratic country where non-Muslim would not be part of the decision-making. As a multiracial parties, DAP and Gerakan should not force their model of equality without understanding the spirit of the intercommunal social contract. As a mentor, Tun Razak had taught Dr. Mahade to find the why factor in his leadership learning. He was the chairman of the meeting when AMNO Supreme Council decided to expel Dr. Mahade from the party. However, he did not intend to influence the committee members to favor Dr. Mahade. Instead, he agreed to the decision made by the committee and took charge of his duty to announce it to the public. It was an act of mentorship to show his credibility and integrity while expecting the mentee to learn something and find the why factor out of it. Mentorship is crucial for leaders who want to improve their leadership skills. Books can only answer the question of what and how. Only the mentor and his experience would be able to guide the mentee to find the why. We can read the books on leadership to learn what leadership is all about or to learn how to become a better leader with some tips and, and suggestions. But no book can tell us why we should become a leader and why some leaders are better than others. Only experiential learning, deep learning and modeling could guide us to understand and find, uh, find the why factor. 
obviously among the most excellent result of Dr. Mahathir reflective learning during his political exile period is the publication of the Malay Dilemma. He began the writing when his freedom of expression to share the ideas and views through newspapers was deprived. Being a political persona non grata and labelled as an ultra Malay made him uneasy to share his views through government controlled media. No newspaper would like to jeopardize their printing and publication permit to offer him a column or two. His ideas might be considered by the press as undesirable public publications, which may go against the Printing Press Act. The Malay Dilemma is work represent his political philosophy concerning the Malays. Few political leaders in the world manage to publish their political philosophy, uh, philosophical work. If they do, they, then they must have a great cause and reasons to dedicate their time and ideas and courage enough to put their freedom and future career in danger. The Malay dilemma revolves around the position of the Malays. Some of his contentions may be outdated and irrelevant today, but the point that he had dedicated his great efforts to observe, write and articulate clearly in his book is tremendously overwhelming. In Malaysia, maybe he is the only leader whose work is not only well known but also highly impactful and challenged society's status quo. It was proven when the book was quickly banned by the Malaysian government. New Economic Policy or NEP, initiated in 1971, addressed most of the problems highlighted by Dr. Mahathir in the Malay Dilemma. Education factor had already been taken care of. More Malays are now highly educated and skillful. For more than two years, Dr. Mahathir was observing uh, the political situation and socio-economic development during the leadership transition from the Tunku to Tun Razak. He had witnessed some new policies introduced and implemented to improve the socio-economic condition of the Malays and the country. He assured that things were going to be better and knew, knew for certain that the country could rely on the new captain who he adored as a mentor. He then made the move to find a way back to Amlo. Facing some housekeeping, uh, housekeeping difficulties, he was finally accepted again as an Amlo member on March the 8th, 1972. The road had reopened for him to journey through the leadership. John C. Maxwell, a world-leading guru of leadership, published the 20, uh, 21 Irrefutable uh, Laws of Leadership in 1998. In his book, he wrote, Successful leaders are learners. Their everyday goal is to get better than yesterday. They build on the progress of the previous days. They develop the vision through experience and reflection. Thus, visionary, visionary leaders are reflective learners who can see the future as clearly as seeing the past. Only those who have seen the limiting past can see the limitless potential of the future. Stephen uh, Arkovi wrote in his international bestseller, The Seven uh, Habits of Highly Effective People, 1989. Uh, All things are created twice. There are, uh, there's a, a mental or first creation and a physical or second creation into all things. Visionary leaders could see the second creation in the future so clearly as they have seen the first creation through their reflective memory. The 21 uh, Irrefutable Laws of uh, Leadership by Maxwell, 1998, uh, described some of the leadership principles commonly displayed among good to great leaders, politicians, nations leaders, social activists, uh, philanthropists, as well as uh, world corporate leaders. The laws do not bind anyone, but those great leaders will certainly live by these laws at certain degrees, even some might go beyond them. A thorough examination of uh, 15 specific occasions in a doctor in the house discovered at least nine Maxwell's laws applied by Dr. Mahathir in the course of leadership learning during the political exile. They are 1. The law of the lead 2. The law of influence 3. The law of respect 4. The law of intuition 5. The law of magnetism 6. The law of inner circle 7. The law of sacrifice 8. The law of timing and 9. The law of explosive dose I will share uh, five of them here and viewers uh, could learn more about the other laws applied by Dr. Mahade in uh, chapter 5 of uh, my book. The Law of the Lead Dr. Mahade's uh, analysis of the Malay's uh, predicament in the Malay Dilemma is exceptional. As he also described in A Doctor in the House, the analysis was based on the problem-based leadership learning. He explored and shared the findings of his analysis through the publication of the book. Although the book was banned in Malaysia, the findings were highly valued by Tun Razak 
who use them to design a new policy called New Economic Policy or Dasar Ekonomi Baru or DEB to improve the situation described in the book. Two occasions here explain the law of the leap applied by Dr. Mahade through the publication of the Malay Dilemma. In this book, Dr. Mahade shared the result of his uh, thorough analysis and observation on the socio-economic backwardness of the Malays. His observation on business ownership at uh, his hometown Alostar indicated a serious undeveloped state of the Malays. There were almost none of them uh, involved in the business. The problem he noticed uh, since the time immemorial, this triggered his curiosity to explore further and find the most probable cause. He applied a diagnostic approach to identify the symptoms and decide on the real disease. New economic policy initiated in 1971 uh, addressed most of the problem uh, highlighted by Dr. Mahathir in the Malay Dilemma. The law of the lead also concerned with the effectiveness and highly determined leader. Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen, two New York, best, uh, New York Times bestseller authors in their book The Aladdin Factor, 1995 wrote, Many of us don't know what to ask for. Either we don't know what is available to us because we have never been exposed to it or we are so out of touch with ourselves that we no longer are able to perceive our real needs and wants. The Law of Influence The second law of Maxwell is the Law of Influence. This is the true measure of leadership. Dr. Mahathir has been in the spotlight of UMNO members and leaders since the early days of his political career. His academic credentials and medical profession enable him to appear confidently in front of the people. His high commitment to serve the party since 1958 is admired by the party. His highly, the highly principled attitude shown through his courage to resign from the Kedah Amno Committee in response to the Tunku's decision to resolve his political com uh, committee attracted the attention of party members and leaders. Since then, he had already been in the party's circle of influence. His influence grew bigger within a couple of years after serving the party. This is proven when he was uh, selected to contest in the 1959 general election. He rejected the offer purposely to prove his sincerity in proposing the improvement of the party's selection criteria for election candidates. When he proposed to the party uh, to choose uh, educated candidates, he did not necessarily mean to prepare a seat for himself. Therefore, to show his true intention, he rejected the offer to contest in the 1959 election. The rejection, however, did not reduce his influence. Instead, it increased further until he was handpicked by Tun Razak to contest in 1964 general election. Amazingly, when he was expelled from Amno in 1969, his influence increased tremendously. The Law of Respect Maxwell's uh, law of respect explained, people naturally uh, follow leaders stronger than themselves. Two occasions described Dr. Mahathir's application of the law of respect. First, the mentorship relation he developed with uh, Tun Razak. Second, his courage to challenge the Tunku. The leadership followership uh, relation between Dr. Mahathir and uh, Tun Razak developed throughout years of political connection from 1958 to 1969. Dr. Mahathir admired Tun Razak's leadership and his open-minded and futuristic thinking. He regarded him as a mentor. In the eyes of Dr. Mahathir, Tun Razak is exceptional. They uh, were both not closely uh, socialized, but when it came to uh, politics, Dr. Mahathir had never doubted the Tun Razak's judgment and, and the support he provided to him. Dr. Mahathir wrote, We did not socialize, but in all matters of politics, I had grown to rely on his judgment and support. Maxwell, 1998 wrote, People don't follow others by accident. They follow individuals whose leadership they respect. Someone who is an 8 in leadership on a scale of from 1 to 10, with 10 being the strongest, doesn't go out and look for a 6 to follow. He naturally follows a 9 or 10. The less skilled follow, the more highly skilled and gifted. Followers are attracted to people who are better leaders than themselves. That is the law of respect. Challenging the su uh, supreme leader who is far beyond his leadership level would certainly not bring any good to him. He was expelled from the party and had suffered the emotional pain living in the political exile and wilderness. The experience, however, strengthened his emotion and developed the leadership quality beyond the transactional leadership. 
By the time he returned to Amno in 1972, he was already known as a transformational leader. James McGregor Burns in his book Leadership 1978 differentiated between the transactional leaders and transformational leaders. The transactional leaders are focusing on the use of uh, rewards and punishment to achieve compliance from uh, followers, whereas the tra transformational leaders are focusing on challenging the status quo, identifying the desired change, creating a vision to guide the change through inspiration and executing the change for the, for the benefit of the people. Maxwell's law of respect concerns with the natural insight. People naturally follow leaders stronger than themselves. The defeat in the 1969 general election and the May 13, uh, 1969 riots persuaded Dr. Mahathir to stand up against the Tunku. Some perceived uh, his move as political suicide, yet some admired him for the courage and bravery. However, from the perspective of the leadership learning process, Dr. Mahathir was applying the law of respect on the Tunku. Dr. Mahathir is less skilled and gifted than the Tunku. The title of the father of independence held by the Tunku is too heavy for him to uncrown. What was left for him was to challenge the Tunku's leadership using the most powerful reasoning approach. The letter to the Tunku was the living proof of his reasoning power. Dr. Mahade had been applying the law of respect to both Tun Razak and the Tunku. He respected the Tunku as much as he respected Tun Razak. He respect, uh, his respect for Tun Razak inspired him to follow. On the other hand, his respect for the Tunku inspired him to challenge. The Law of Magnetism The Law of Magnetism explains who you are is who you attract. If you want to attract better people, become the kind of persons you desire to attract. Maxwell, 1998 Leaders are like the magnets, attracting magnetic objects, the followers. The stronger the leader, the larger number of followers attracted to him. Leaders should be able to attract as many followers and new leaders into their leadership circle. To do that, they have to develop and strengthen their leadership caliber and integrity. Only then they can uh, become a strong leader who would be able to attract more followers and new leaders. Dr. Mahathir has shown his strong leadership character through his courage to, uh, to reason and challenge the Tunku. He is not apologetic and meant everything he wrote to the Tengku. This is a sign of high leadership credibility. The Law of Sacrifice Perhaps the most powerful law applied by Dr. Mahade during political exile is the Law of Sacrifice. The law explained a leader must give up to go up. Maxwell 1998 It was the core value of every leadership journey. Leadership is a long journey to claim more responsibilities and to give up more rights. Leaders will have to sacrifice to move up. Time, money, health, hobbies or anything that daily hold them back during the peaceful time.